Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. And Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, and all the other possible things that you can have. Um, we're just a couple of days left in 2023. And for the most part, I think, tw has 2023 been pretty good for you, Athena? Yeah. And stuff, because I think it's been really, really good. And maybe I base too much of that on the fact that the Lions won the NFC North Championship. Um, Maybe that doesn't mean anything to you, but boy, does it mean something to me. I have been a really big Lions fan for a very, very long time. NFL is my favorite sport. We're not going to go on too much about that, but that has something to do with the colors that I chose for making this pineapple. So Athena and I were sitting there and we're watching the game and we won and we went to, you know, New Year's, Christmas Eve things and stuff. And I'm like, we, I should make something that's that color. And, and I know how much everybody likes the quilt as you go. Why do you like quilt as you go? Because when you get the quilt done, you don't have to then try to quilt it. So this is a great way to do even larger quilts. So I'm gonna start off by showing you kind of the progression that I've been making with this particular technique of quilt as you go. And I call it easy sashings. And I gotta tell you, it was a quick little demo that one of, Jan, one of the gals in my quilt guild did on making a table runner and how she put the blocks together. And I was like, there's some that that technique's got legs and so I just have done all these different things with it and it's been really great so let's see here I can see I know Jody Jody can't believe they pulled it off I know, I know but we did <sighs> and now I can breathe and then there's Saturday and then there'll be a whole nother bit of you know trauma in my life afterwards so this is a just the center of what we'll work on today this is what I'm calling the pineapple log cabin kind of a um you know play on the quilt as you go log cabin that i'll show you the original one of that so the first one that i did with this easy sashings technique is this one which still doesn't have a binding so no judgment okay so this was what i called the reversible easy sashings quilt so this was one side and voila there's another side to it. And you can see the cream on this side and the black on this side. And that is the easy sashings part. It's just super easy. If you haven't seen any of the videos on this, you're gonna love this. So this one does have its own book, just a little booklet showing you how to do the reversible and how to do the easy sashings, okay? Then next, I did the quilt as you go log cabin. Now, the Quilt As You Go Log Cabin does not have a booklet for it. You just got to watch the video um, over and over and over again. And honestly, I think once you watch the video, you get it. But this is also done with that easy sashings. Now, this particular one, I linked the playlist for this quilt in the comments or in the description below, because this also has the video instructions on how to do the piano key border, how to attach the border, and how to do this faux mitered border, which you might wanna put on your um, log cabin pineapple, totally up to you. So this is that one, log cabin instructions on video, and then the easy sashings you could get out of the reversible one. Then I started going a little bit crazy. I'm like, you know what? If we could do that, why couldn't I do this? So I found a way, figured out a way to do the easy sashings on point, which everybody knows that I think on point quilts are the best. They obviously are because I think so. Um, so this one is my fractured glass book. This is where the blocks are made with my fractured glass. Oh, Athena says, bring it down. I forgot she's not as tall as I am. So this is the fractured glass book, giving you the instructions on how to make the foundation piece, small ones, and the traditional piece, large ones. This was all painted. I actually did a whole series on painting this particular fabric for this quilt. Now here, I wanna show you the back of it. There you go. That's how you know it's quilt as you go with easy sashings. Okay, so this one, the instructions for this comes out of this book, not the instructions for making the block, that's the other booklet. This is the one that has the instructions for the straight set log cabin setting type one and the on point setting like this one is done and 
the 60 degree setting. So with this one, I used the easy sashings technique. And then I did smaller sashings, only a half inch finished sashings, which took a little bit more effort to get them to work. But I did that because of the points. I didn't want to lose the points on my English paper pieced diamonds. And the English paper pieced diamonds come from this book. <laughs> so everything is in here. This one has 18 different blocks for doing English paper piecing and or machine paper piecing. And of course, there's videos to go along with all of these previous ones, right? So today we are going to work on the log cabin, pineapple log cabin. So this is what the booklet looks like, but this is not a hard copy that book. It is not available for hard copy at this time. This is available as an e-pattern. Again, I think I put the link below, um, but you could go to my website, which is quiltingwithnancy.com, go to the books and notions, and then you'll find it right there. So this is available as an e-pattern, which means you just download it and you print it off or you just read it off your computer. This one has 17 pages, so not too hard to actually print off, all right? So that is the history of the easy sashings. I'm going to check for questions. No, it's, okay, yes, all right. So we are going to start. So to start with... You are going to prepare your batting and backing. So we will mostly be working right down here on this little table. I have pre-cut all of my pieces. I pre-cut my center square here, which looks like it's gotten the lint from the uh, bamboo batting. I'm using bamboo batting this time. Then I cut my first set of logs, my second set of logs, my third set of logs, and I am doing it kind of in a scrappy, you can see the collection of fabrics that I've got here, kind of creamy-ish, light blue-ish, white-ish, kind of like that. And then I also have pre-cut all of my blue squares, which really cool is that you only need one size. There were some other pineapple log cabins that I looked at going, well, do I want to do it that way? Honestly, it was just too many different things. With this, I knew exactly what I needed and the triangles were all the same size. So the batting and the backing are both cut the same size, two inches larger than your actual block will finish. Hi, Lorna. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Carolyn. Yeah, you did do the ver reversible one. Yep, that's a good question. Constance and Jody and Jenny all the way from Australia. Hello, everybody. Okay, so this, it needs to be cut two inches larger than whatever your block is going to be. Our block is going to be a, four, a 12 inch finished block. So I have cut these 14 inches. My bamboo batting, you can use bamboo or cotton batting and you want to secure it to the backing. So this is the 505 temporary adhesive basting spray. This is the only good brand. All the other ones are not good. That is my opinion, but I know it to be true because I've tried them all. So this would be the one. You can get it at any of your local shops or at firesidequilts.com. And I'm just going to do a light coat, not too much of it, and then set that to the side and put my batting down. That's the only place that you use the basting spray. Then you're going to take your center square. Now in this case, what I normally would do is I would just fold it to find my intersections. I just drew that on there so you could actually see it. Then use one of the tools that is used in this. So there's this four by 14 ruler that has always been my favorite ruler. This one I'm gonna use all the time. Then we're also gonna use a six and a half, a nine and a half, and then a large 15 inch to square these little guys all up. So I want to center this. So 14 inches, the middle is seven. Well, that couldn't be any easier. So I'm gonna line the line up at seven, but I don't know if it's proper going this way. So I'm gonna take my ruler. Oops, yep, I gotta scooch it this way. So now it's closer. Now I come to this side. I go, yeah, oh yeah, that's pretty good. I got seven, I'm gonna go to the other side. Because you don't have a ton of extra playroom. I actually probably, just like this, I'd go around and around and around till I knew that it was, generally speaking, as centered as I could make it be. Now I'm going to use my first set of logs. So the first set of logs, I'm just gonna take it and put it right sides down. Now this is a batik, so you can't tell if it's right side or wrong side and I'm gonna pin it. So I'm using my very fine 
high quality clover glass head pins so they go into the fabrics very nicely hi Della that's who is not my name sorry should I not tell everybody that <laughs> I told everybody Della sorry <laughs> so, then I'm going to put it on the other side now my machine I have already set up to a scant quarter of an inch and I'll give you a kind of an idea um, for this project it works best if your machine can move its needle so coming over here I have already moved my needle so that my needle is a scant quarter of an inch from the edge of my foot I really can't use the seam guides that I normally use but if you cannot move your needle to the right then you're going to have to figure another way to figure out your scant quarter inch I have a fat sewing machine which means it's got a built-in walking foot it that is going to help these fabrics feed through more evenly as we go um, you might want to consider using your walking foot on your regular sewing machine that would be up to you see how much these fabrics move this would also be the time that i'm using the extension table so without the extension table oops my machine would have another tray on here over there um so it would only be like this big for projects like this, get yourself an extension table, maybe that clear colored one that we always use when we are doing the free motion quilting, all right? So we're ready to start. I've got my machine set up, my needle is positioned, and I'm gonna sew this strip on. The other advantage to this particular machine is it's got a really wonderful thread cutter. So when it comes to the end, I'm just hitting my thread cutter and then turning around. If you don't have a thread cutter, obviously you're gonna have to pick up your block, pick up the foot um, and cut your threads. All right, and cut. So Athena's gonna move back now. This is a little dance we do when we're doing these videos. I'm gonna take my pins out. I'm gonna reach over for my clover mini iron. Now I store my clover mini iron in my big Wonder Woman mug over here so I don't burn myself or the house all of those things the clover is just going to work great for this you're just going to slide the piece over and iron it down all right so this is similar right now to the quilt as you go log cabin the traditional one but it'll change here in a little bit now i'm ready to put on my second log so i've done the left and right now i want to do my top and bottom i'm going to get my new log this one's got a little creak in it smooth that out all right and I'm going to place the log right here. So looking at it very closely, you can see that the edge of the log right here is lined up with the seam allowance underneath. So you need that log to cross over into the first log by that quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to put a pin. Oops, there's my hand. And then another pin is going to go there. So let me slide this so I'm not covering it up too much. Right. We have a question. Okay, what's the question? Cynthia asks, why are you sewing over your pins? Because I can, Cynthia. Um, I sew over my pins all the time. One big part of that is that I'm using the right pins. If you're using pins that are too thick or have a bigger ball on the end of them, you will probably break your pins a lot and maybe need to get your machine tuned up. I sew over my pins all the time. It is a, it's, it's an option and I choose to do it. You don't have to do it, but I certainly don't want these fabrics to move while I'm sewing them, all right? So that is why. So you don't have to do it. I would recommend that when you do do it, that you don't go too fast over the top of them. So right here, I'll kind of, you know, all right, I didn't slow down. You're right. Usually, depending on what I'm doing, I'll kind of slow down. This is going over these quite smoothly, especially with these little silky clover pins with the small ball. And you know what'll happen? Now that I've told you that I don't hit pins very often, I'll hit pins within this block. You're in darn to it. All right, now we go back and take the pins out. So when you watch any of my other ones, Cynthia, you'll see that I do. Yeah, it'll break needles. Um, it'll, it just will. But for the precision that I want, it's worth a broken needle now and again. Um, it's more of an issue that over time, it will actually um, make the timing on your machine go out. And then you just got to get it tuned up, which you got to get it tuned up anyway. So that's just what I think about it. All right. This is the trickiest part of the whole process, right? So we're going to go to look at this ruler. This is my 
four by 14 OmniGrid ruler. There are other rulers that you can use, but you all know that I am an OmniGrid fan, always have been an OmniGrid fan. It's just my, see, I even put my initials on them so I don't lose them. This is the main angle that we need to use. This is the 45 degree angle right there, okay? But for the marking of this next part, to put the triangles on so that your quilt block actually ends up square, you need this angle, and then you need an additional angle. And you'll see that the starting of this angle, the second one right here, it's starting on that dot. It's the dot on the 45 degree angle that is a quarter of an inch from the edge of the ruler. And then from that dot, I drew a straight line so that this angle was 45 degrees. So if I were to take my square ruler here, if I place it on the 45 degree angle that's already printed on my ruler, then I took a Sharpie marker and I marked, and it was a regular Sharpie, not this fine kind, and I marked that on the ruler. The Sharpie marker will come out with like goo gone, something like that. So this is so important to actually mark your rulers because this is what's going to keep our quilt rather square okay so now we're going to the front end and this is where we are going to mark where you are going to put the half square triangle units these little guys all right so this is the idea and i'm hoping athena can almost get an overhead shot i am placing that dot that is on the 45 degree angle on that corner right there so that when I'm drawing this line, the line will be drawn a quarter, scant quarter inch away from the dot. And then I'm using these lines, that line I drew and the existing one on the ruler to make sure that it's lined up square within the quilt. If I just took the triangle and said, oh yeah, that's pretty good. My blocks did not turn out square enough. So this is how I fixed it so that they would. So I place it there. Then I'm gonna use a friction Pen. Those are the ones that the um, ink goes away when it gets ironed. You could use any ink on here as long as it was an acid-free kind of thing. And so that is my line. That's going to tell me where to place my triangle. I'm going to come around and do that on all of the angles. This little bit of what might look like um, extra time made a huge difference in my block actually turning out square. And I'll, I'll show you another little trick to kind of keep that due. If you were doing this regular quilt without quilt as you go, you'd be able to trim it and then it wouldn't be this issue. Yes. Sonia asks, have you ever used a pineapple ruler? Um, I have not because I don't own one. Um, I am a huge advocate of rulers that can do 199 different things. So I do not have very many rulers that can just do one thing, like just a pineapple. Doesn't mean I don't have any, but I don't have a pineapple ruler. So this is rulers I already own. So these are the ones I'm going to use. Good question, Sonia. All right. So I've got that drawn on and keeping in mind that line is a quarter of an inch from the corner of the point there. And I'm going to place my triangle right on there. And then I'm going to kind of center it up. I'm going to go, if I'm looking at these two lines here, this little guy seems to be centered-ish there. I'm not looking for perfection here. You know, the amount sticking out here is similar to the amount sticking out there. So that looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to put my customary pins in it. On the first set of triangles, you can do two at a time. When we do the next set of triangles, we'll be able to do all four at a time. So just placing it there, trying to get it lined up. And because you really can't see under here, you can't line it up from here to here. So it really is just a visual, you know, going, yep, good enough. Quilt making is not about perfection. Quilt making is about having fun and being artists. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to go and sew these little guys. Right over here, gonna sew with, whoops, are you there? Yep. Okay, Athena's here. I'm gonna sew with our scant quarter inch. And cut. Nope, one more. And then here. There we go, and then we'll go press these ones. Okay, and I've got a couple of blocks pre-made, so we'll be able to kind of speed 
through this a little bit. All right, so take my pins out here. And then I want to show you here what may stump some of you or may make you, some of you want to take things out, but you know, I'm not a big fan of taking things out. All right, this one turned out pretty good. When I press this over, I only lost, I don't know, one thread on the inside square. Sometimes I lost five threads. Ooh, here I lost three threads. I did not quite catch that corner. So that tells me that probably my fabric was a little bit scooched in, but does that bother me? No, I am only pointing it out so that when this happens to you, you don't freak out and go, oh no, I'm doing it wrong. There's no wrong in quilt making. This is perfectly fabulous. This is not going to be my latest show quilt. So that does not concern me, that kind of placement. After you do that, then you will take your next two triangles and place them on the other side, one, two, one, two, sew them, and through the magic of television, voila, there we go. So all four of them are now sewed on. Yes. I have a question. Yes, Athena. If it bothered somebody, mm -hmm. can they take that out and redo it? Yep, they'd have to take out the entire seam. So you'd come in here, take that all out, and then maybe scooch your triangle back three threads farther and then do your seam or leave it there and then take a slightly less seam and then take out the first seam. Um, but I really, I'll show you some blocks and I'll really point out the ones that maybe would really freak you guys out. And I, you wouldn't notice them unless I say something. All right. So this is the next step to making sure that your quilt squares turn out approximately all the same size and pro and rather square. And this one is using a six and a half inch ruler. Again, there's lots and lots of different brands of six and a half inch rulers. This just happens to be my favorite one and I have every size available. So this is what I'm able to use. You could do this with a bigger ruler, just spinning it around. But here I need this to end up six and a half inches. So I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, right here, do you see here where this is sticking out just the slightest bit bigger? I'm going to take my white boheme chalk pencil, whatever you have that's a pencil that you can see on whatever your triangle is. I'm just going to draw a slightest little bit there. Turn it here. All right, that one looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of a line right there in the middle. And this is going to help me line up my next log. Oh, look at this. There's almost an eighth of an inch right here off the edge. So I'm going to take, that'll really make a difference. So this one is lined up, but then this other one is off a little bit. Why? I don't know. I think maybe because, I don't know. Um, I know that I cut pretty accurately. I know that I sew pretty accurately. So why one of them would stick up higher than the other? I don't know. But I know that by doing this, I have fixed the issue. It no longer will be an issue. All right. So now we're going to take our next logs and we will proceed to do just like we did before. But here, where that chalk line is, I'm going to place it there. So here it was good on that part of the triangle, but here I'm going to be able to put it down a little bit. That will keep my next block sections to be more precise. I'll do this side, then the other side, and I'm doing it scrappy. So I'm doing sometimes the same fabrics on each side, sometimes not. Here again, I did that little bit of a chalk marking there. I'd be able to place that one there, pin that, sew that, press them out, and then put the next one on. And then we would be set for our next triangle section. Okay. So if we have, I have my four logs done, my six and a half inch logs. Then I put on my next triangle sets. I did the same thing with my ruler. I lined up the ruler so that it was on that 45 degree angle, drew my line so then I knew where to place my triangles. And now I already sold them going to press them up. Let's see how these points are. Oh, this one. Yep. I cut that one off a little bit right there. Oh, that one was pretty good. All right. So that's our second round, pretty much just like the first, right? Now the block should measure nine and a half inches. Oh, voila. I have a nine and a half inch ruler. <laughs> so I'm just going to set that down on there and do the same thing. Just kind of eyeing it. Now this one's perfect. This is a great one for me to show you. Sometimes it's not too big, it's too small. Look at right over here. This edge right there, look at, he's like an eighth of an inch too small. So when I am placing my next 
strip. I'm going to have my ruler, this entire one. Wait a minute, this right here is a little big. So I got one little big place and a couple of little small places. So this is what I do. I am going to place my nine and a half. I'm going to go, ooh, he's a little bit small there. So when I place my strip, I'm going to place it a little bit over. So it will actually now, if I put that there, yeah, that edge is going to be at nine and a half. My seam allowance will be approximately, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, something smaller than a scant quarter an inch for the blue, but it will totally hold together. Antique quilts, applique antique quilts, you actually only have eighth inch seams and they're antique, so they last. When I'm doing this last set, I'm going to use four pins like that so that that won't move as I go. And now I'm going to measure this other one just to see how close it is. So Sonia asks, you don't trim it? No, you can't trim it. Now, if this were a traditional block, then you could take that block and trim it down, just like you're thinking, Sonia. But this isn't. I can't trim this down because I've got the batting and backing there. Um, so I just use the ruler to make my measurements. So I'm going to come to this next one, go, all right, so that guy, he needs to be a little bit out from there. And he, this next one, would be there. All right. And then again, I would put in four pins. I would sew that. Then we would be to the next section. So this one has, but this one, I do have something tricky I want to show you here too. All these little tricky trick tricks. Thanks, Jenny. I like to be clever. Okay. Well, I've never thought of myself as clever. So you saying it makes me feel pretty good because that's like one of those English words. Is that an Australian word? We don't say clever in the United oh, States. For, not, oh, Athena, you're so clever. I'd say, Athena, you're so smart. Wow. Or, you know, I, I never think of clever until I'm watching, brilliant. you know, BBC. Then I go, yes, Athena, you're brilliant. You. All right. So when you are pinning this second set, there's my first strips that I just did that one already. Press them out. I'm ready for my last logs. And watch how I have to pin this. I mentioned that this piece, this edge of the log needs to overlap by a quarter of an inch. I'm going to make that one overlap by a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to come over here and look at this. If I just lay this down, that is not overlapping a quarter of an inch. That's only overlapping an eighth of an inch. I'm going to pull it and I'm going to make it work. There, now it's overlapping a quarter of an inch. And now watch the center, which you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to be all crooked. When I just lay that down, it's straight as can be. Not a problem. It is going to ease that little bit of an eighth inch in there without issue at all. I would put my pins right there, sew that little guy on, and then voila, I would have my block done. Now, one thing I want to show you, I, can't, I think I must have already done that one, is you do have to come to the back side. If you are using a your thread cutter, <laughs> um, then you need to, then you'll have like these tails on the back. Technically, I want to recommend that you do it as you go, but I have found that with this quilt, none of them really got smashed down or sewed in by the next seam. Every once in a while, I would find one that did, but overall, it wasn't an issue. So just, you can wait, depending on your machine, of course. Oops, and then I say that, and then this one right here got sewed in. Let's get him out from underneath there. Got him out. So after I get my blocks done, then I will go back and I will do this, okay? And then I get obsessed and I want to do all even the little teeny tiny things and I don't want to really do that. Okay, okay. So then that's all trimmed. So then you've got your block and he looks pretty darn fabulous. You will see that he is uh, maybe an inch-ish from the edge. We have to have that extra, which I'm going to show you in a second when we trim this. If we look at the back of it for now, just so that you kind of have an idea, that's what all those lines have done. Um, ooh, this one's important. You know how I told you that here we were cutting off maybe? Well, look at here. This time he's floating out there a little bit. Don't know why, but he is. But that's okay. I'm all right with it. It didn't bother me. The right here. Technically, this strip should have gone right there to that point, yeah. kind of like this strip went Got to it. this one. But it's floating. And the truth is, is that floating points are never noticeable. Cut off points are the things that are much more noticeable. Yeah. Once you get it to this point, 
Turn the threads on the back of the other way. Nope, it will not make the stitching unravel because each line of stitching is crossed over by another line of stitching. So you don't have to do any backing, um, any back stitching. You can if you want, but you don't have to, um, which is kind of a standard sort of a quilting sort of a thing. So now that the block is completely pieced and mostly quilted, you need to consider how much space you have unquilted. I am a huge advocate of equal density of quilting. Um, actually, it was funny. We just had a teacher come to our quilt guild, and she was actually saying what I say all the time that I never hear teachers say. And I was like, oh, my goodness, we're kindred spirits. But the idea is that you can't do tight quilting in some places and leave other places unquilted. When you wash that quilt, it's going to be puffy in some parts and not in others. So when I look at this block, I need to address that issue. And here's the issue. Here on the logs, we have a one and a half inch spacing. But when we get to the center, that is a three inch square. I don't want to leave a three inch square unquilted. I need to quilt that. Also, the triangles. Those triangles are really quite large to be left unquilted. So at this point, I want to do the quilting on this block. I have not trimmed the block yet. Okay, so for doing the quilting, I'm going to grab a new thread, and I chose a shiny blue thread just because it's shiny and blue, and that qualified in my book. Thread. Oh, yeah, it's a lion's color, and that's actually more, Hon this is more Honolulu blue than some of the other threads I've used. I am using this Clover Silk Pins. Let me get one here. So that's, um, they are maybe, let's measure. They're very, very fine. I want to pay, say like 0 0.004 or something. Um, and they're about an inch and a quarter long. And the ball on the head of them is a glass ball. So it won't melt if you're doing something that your iron is getting near it. I don't and generally have that issue, but that's why it's a glass head pin. Good question, Della. All right. So now we're going to take it and we're quilting it. I'm going to put my machine back to the middle, boop, 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 move my needle over. And I like to take it up to a 3.0 stitch length, a little bit longer than my piecing stitch length is just because that's a preference for me. I'm going to start off the edge of the block at that triangle, and I am just going to quilt a straight line connecting the triangle points. Now you could draw a straight line with a, you know, removable marking tool of your choice. Um, I'm just kind of eyeing it. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much as straight as Nancy can make it without a drawn line, and I'm good with that. Take that all the way to the edge, cut off my thread. Whoops, cut off my thread. Don't need to do a lot there either, because this beginning and ending will also be secured with its crossing stitches. So come in here again. So what this is doing is this quilting is making these triangles be half the size and making that center square be no more than that one and a half inches. So that when this quilt gets washed, it's not going to be fluffing up oddly. All right. And cut there. All right. So let's see how that guy looks. Quite pretty, if I say so. I just, I like that kind of blue color in it. Okay. Now it is time to trim this block. Now this is going to be the hardest thing because we don't have a ton of room on this little table. I would normally, normally I do everything that I've done so far without leaving the seat that I'm in right now, but this trimming part I actually would go to my big table. So here's the idea. I'm going to use my, I am standing up at this point, and I've got my 15 and a half inch ruler. These blocks were designed to be a 12 inch finished but I'm going to trim them to 13 inches, which will make sense why when I actually do the sashings. Let's see. All right. So if we come down here, there's the block. There's my 13 inch. Come all the way over here to the corner. You got that? All right. Yep. So it's a, about a quarter of an inch bigger than the block itself. All the way up here on the top. Same idea. All right. That one's more like three eighths of an inch and that's okay. That's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to now trim this block to 13 inches, which is a quarter of an inch 
past the design itself. Um, and in this case, sometimes more and sometimes less. So I've trimmed the right and the top side, lift up my ruler and spin that around. Now I'm gonna tuck it right into 13 inches on my ruler. So down here on the bottom and on the left-hand side, uh, there. The bottom and left-hand side are right on the 13. Now I can trim this, the right side and the top side. Now I would never square a block up while sitting down anyhow, but that's how you're gonna trim that up. So now that block is ready to go with his partner block, okay? His partner block is around here somewhere. There he is, he's right here. The partner block, all right, if you will just hold on one second, I gotta get underneath all of those quilts that I put here and get to my sashings. All right, so your sashings are going to be cut 13 inches. So I took my fabric, this is the fabric that is for my sashings, and I cut a 13, I actually cut two 13 inch wide strips. Then from those 13 inch wide strip, I then cut two inch strips out of it. So this is a 13 inch wide strip, now cutting the two inch wide out of that. So this makes it, it's just much more effective use of your fabric. If you cut a two inch strip, you will have more scrap. This way, cutting the 13 inch strip first and then cutting the size that you need out of that so that you will have two by 13 inch strips, right? You will have one for the front, which you will leave flat like that. The one that you choose for the back you will actually have a, um, a, full, a, a half inch, couldn't remember that measurement, a half inch fold. To find that half inch fold, what I do is I usually press it in half first, then I take and I press this side to match up to that. So now I have a half inch fold on this. Now this is my back strip. In this case, I'm using the same fabric, but you don't have to. You can use a totally different fabric on the back. That would be up to you, okay? Then these strips, this one will be pinned on the front and the folded one will be pinned on the back like this, okay? So I'm gonna pin the front one on to the front of a block. I'm going to have the back, here's the folded one on the back. And I'm gonna use a lot of pins. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins on this 13 inch space. And then I am going to sew it with a half inch seam allowance. Of everything that I've talked about so far, a half inch seam allowance should seem to you like, oh my goodness, what is she talking about? Yep, a half inch seam allowance. And when you see, if you've never seen this happen, you're gonna go, all right, that's pretty darn clever. Yep, I'm gonna use that word more often, Jenny. All right, so I've sewn that with a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna take my pins out. And then I'm gonna press just the top. Now I do normally use, oops, I usually use my big iron at my ironing board for this, but I'm just gonna use my little clover for now. You are pressing just the top strip, the one without the fold. You do not press the other one. Okay. Now I'm going to take my second block, the partner block for him. See this here? I'm gonna flip this on top of it, so here is that two inch strip, the flat one. I'm gonna pin that now to the partner block. I'm gonna put the same amount of pins in there, lots and lots of pins, because this is a lot of um, thicknesses going on here. Um, this would definitely be a time to have your walking foot on. Um, if you've got one of those that you use when you're doing your traditional straight line quilting, this would be a good time to have it on there. Okay, now I'm gonna sew this with a half inch seam allowance. So on my machine, oops, I gotta take out my shiny blue thread. I'm gonna load back in my cotton thread, which this is a FAF icon, has the easiest threading system ever. You kind of bring it up here and then you push that button and it says, voila, how do you think I did, mom? I think you did really good. Mom. Yeah, well, I'm his mom. 
right? And for me, for making the half inch seam allowance, I'm gonna take and now move my needle all the way to the left on my machine, which is a 4.5. So you've gotta do whatever you've gotta do to make your machine know where a half inch seam allowance is. Now I'm gonna to come to the end here. And just like with the first one, sewing with a half inch seam allowance, keeping the edge of my foot lined up on the edge of that straight um, strip that's there. So I think that some of you probably are getting the gist of it now. If I had a two inch strip and I take a half inch seam off of one side and another half inch seam off the other side, what's going to be left? So let's go back to the table. Um, there we go. Oh, for a minute there, I thought the video froze. Okay, good. No technical difficulties. This is like a banner day. All right. So now this is what the front looks like. It has a one inch sashing. You can see here that my block is, you know, I've got that quarter of an inch extra here. Um, some of my little points here matched up nicely and sometimes they didn't. So that was just, it is what it is. And on the back of the quilt, there's a half inch seam, there's a half inch seam, and they meet right in the middle. Now again, normally I do this with my big iron. I take it to my ironing board and I press so that they are meeting together. But I need them to be secure, to stay where I have put them, and they won't do that unless you add a little bit of extra. This is heat press batting together. This is available, but should be available at most of your local quilt shops. It is definitely available at firesidequilts.com, who is my good friend, Laura, that owns an online quilt shop. So you can pick that up there, firesidequilts.com. And I'll put the link below. I did not put that there yet. This is how it comes. It is three quarters of an inch wide and it comes on a roll like this. And it is, for all intents and purposes, a fusible Trico interfacing. So just like we would use if we were garment makers. I am a garment maker. Um, so sometimes when I don't have any of this on hand, I actually will cut my Trico fusible interfacing that I use for garments for using this on quilts. This is also made for putting batting together. Um, it's fabulous. No long, you know, I can use all these little scraps of batting now. So by adding this, I'm making that center seam be secure. So as this gets washed or whatever, it's not going to um, roll up onto itself, All right? Okay. Yes. Um, how hot does it have to be for it to stay secure? Um, it's a few, I, 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 I usually tune my iron on the very hottest that it can go, and I use it at the hottest with all the steam possible all the time. So it's pretty hot, okay? okay? So. All right, so now we need to secure, here's that one with the fold. We need to secure this down to cover up that seam. And to do that, I use my Roxanne's basting glue, which the lid has been giving me some fits there. There, all right. So this is Roxanne's basting glue. It's a temporary basting glue, which means it will wash out, all right. Acid-free, water-soluble. And I'm gonna use dots of it along the back edge here. How do you do that? Have you ever used heat? and bond light? Um, heat and bond light is a two-sided adhesive. For this adhering it here, you want just a one-side adhesive, and that's why the fusible interfacing does the job. Good question. All right, and then this is going to come over and cover so that it goes right to the seam line. All right. Now, I again, usually with my big iron, <laughs> I bring it in and I make it dry faster. So I'll just use my little iron, which honestly, if you don't have a clover mini iron at this point, um, you, you needed to have one on your Christmas list, put it on your birthday list, do whatever you got to do. Cause I, I use this little guy. I mean, I do so much paper piecing. Hmm? Anniversaries. Anniversaries. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yep. Mother's day. Mother's day yeah. All right. Okay. Now I've got that now secured down. Okay, so my blocks are together, but not sewn yet. I'm going to show you how to do that. That looks pretty cool, right? Now I'm going to go and sew it, and I am going to sew it 
with an eighth inch seam allowance on the ledge of the sashing. That is going to secure that and the side that is not sewn yet. So I'm gonna put my machine back to the middle and start right there. I'm gonna sew it an eighth of an inch on the ledge, which that on the ledge thing, that's how I like sew, how I quilt um, all of my straight lines on my quilt. So like if I'm doing the border or the inner border, I always secure the quilt first with this kind of on the ledge stitching. I went one stitch too far, back, back, back. Okay, spin that around. Now this block, this is just two of them. Super simple, right? As the quilt gets larger, obviously it is going to get more bulk, bulk. It's going bulky. to get bulkier. I think that's a good word, right? Bulkier. Yeah. Um, so just know that, yeah, it's super simple at this point, but it will get bulkier, but it's still not going to be as bulky as quilting your own quilt. Okay. So now he is all secured. This then goes on to, I'll be right back. Here it is. It's going to go on here. I've got this. Did I lose it? I hope not. Nope, there it is. All right. So now this little guy will go on. You'll put the two together to make the center section. So go voila, 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 voila. That's how you would make the two sections together. For this quilt, the other thing that I figured out with the easy sashings is how to put a cornerstone in the sashing. On all the other ones, I've only used one big long strip. And for this, I really wanted a cornerstone. So he will be like this. And here is the trick. You cut a two inch square. So it is the same as your two inch front sashing and then sew it with a half inch seam allowance. Okay. Yes, I could have cut a one and a half inch square, but then I would have had to redo these. And this way I'm just using the same seam allowance through the whole thing. So it made it a lot easier. After I've done the four like this, okay, then I'm going to put a set of two and a set of two. So the book explains how you do it. So I actually don't do it in rows. You could, but I don't. I start with the center and then I'll add two to the sides and then one big long row at the top and the bottom. But you could put it together any way you choose. I just find this, I don't know, it's a little easier because it's not all bulky all the time. Okay. So with this, it's going to be the same idea as when we put the blocks together. On the back side here, I use just one long strip. In this case, this is 26 inches because a 13 inch block and a 13 inch block added together is 26 inches. I've got that fold there. I did not put a cornerstone in the back just because it's not necessary. But on the front, I'm going to have my cornerstone sashing. So I have two 13 inch sashings. The cornerstone press the seam toward the sashing fabric, and then it will actually butt right together. You'll be able to butt that seam, put a pin in there, butt that seam. Oops, put a pin in there. Then I would come over here. I would put this one down this one down, sew that entire strip, and then you're putting the next row together just like you put the blocks together. The same idea. From there on out, it's always the same thing. Once you get, you know, two blocks together, put those together. The only difference is that the back sashing is just one big strip of fabric. The front sashing, in this case, has a cornerstone in it, um, which I really like that. Whoops in the design so you can see the cornerstone right here all right now i did not quilt over the cornerstone um just because i had a white thread so i'm not sure if i'm going to come back and add a little bit of color you know colored thread over that cornerstone the reason i mention it is because on the back now this is not stitched down that's the half inch fold part that did not get stitched down because i stopped my quilting here and here so in this case, I probably will come back and just hand applique that little guy down so that he's all done. After that, you can choose to put borders on and you put the borders on in the same method. In the instructions, I give you some sizes, but you pretty much could do any border you want. You know, cut your strip, you're backing a little bit bigger than the border, quilt it, 
and then attach it to the quilt with the easy sashings, which in this case makes the inner border. So if you look at the drawing here, actually makes the inner border with the black. And then there's this little part about adding a square to it. And so that's in the instructions too. But that would be up to you how you actually want a border. Modern quilters don't put borders on their quilts. I'm not very modern, so I do. The other thing that I want to mention is that in the book also, I've given you a couple of different color ways to consider because um, maybe maybe you're not a Lions fan, which, you know, most years I'd say good for you. Save your, you know, anxiety level. But in this case, I'm very sorry that you're not a Lions fan yet. And do we think we can go to the Super Bowl? Yes, we do. Don't we? Yeah. Yes. All right. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. I would really appreciate it if you give the uh, video a thumbs up, you know, subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe to the channel, do be sure you hit the notifications bell so that that way you'll know when I'm going to do something like this. You just get a little notification that says, hey, Nancy's going to go live. And then you can go, okay, I didn't miss it. The other thing is... Yeah, share with your friends. Oh, those of you that are already Quilt Addict members of the channel, there's a link below, tells you all about what membership is on. Those of you that are Quilt Addict members, you already got this in your email. So if you know that you are a Quilt Addict member and you have not gotten your email with the pattern, because that's a Quilt Addict perk, is that you get to have an e-version of every book and pattern that I write as I'm writing them. So you've got that in your mail. If you don't have it, it's possible I don't have your email because there's no way for me to get your email unless you send it to me. So if you're a Quilt Addict member or a designer level member, you also have gotten the Zoom link for doing the electric quilt training. So this was obviously, well, not obviously, I design everything on electric quilt. So this was designed on electric quilt. And in tomorrow night's Zoom session, we are gonna talk about how this quilt was designed and how to use block basics. Um, so Sonia just purchased the block, block base program and that links up to EQ. So we wanna talk a little bit about that and how you can actually use that. Um, so look at the link below to find out about joining, then you'll know more about it. But remember, if you do join at the attic level or design level, you wanna send me your email. Is there any other? So, you can do that, Jenny. You can go right to quiltingwithnancy.com, click on the books and the links, and an e-pattern, you don't have to pay for shipping. I think I get charged a little bit more because it's an international rate for my PayPal thing, but other than that, you get it right there. If you do want me to ship you hard copy books, I can do that, but obviously shipping is a little bit higher, so I would tell you how much it would cost and then figure that out. There, Thanks, Poodle. Um, Sonia, hey Sonia, just so you know, Athena is spelled A T H I N A because she was born in Greece. So sometimes we just call her Tina. That's how I always remembered that that's what you use. Any other? Yep, she does do a great job with that too. All right. Was that clever, Jenny? Did you like that? Thank you very much. And I have a retreat coming up, and I'm teaching down in um, Daytona, AQS Daytona. I'm teaching all electric quilt training classes. So if you want more information on that, you can send me an email or you can find the videos that are there. I think that's it. How long did we go? Pretty long? Uh, almost 50. I thought it might be an hour, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to go have a glass of wine and go play a board game. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you all very much. I really, really appreciate it.